Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this is going to be another educational short video. You could see in the previous video I was talking about the power consumption um, of IB subwoofers and that was also based on the fact that many people were always asking separate questions and none of my videos really covered that topic. This video is similar in that sense because yes, I have many videos uh, showing these installations, but now I'm going to show in a short video with pictures um, because I understand many people don't have time to watch 20, 30 vid minute videos. And yes, I have playlists that I'm going to put in the description. And if you wanna watch those long videos, then you can, but now I'm creating a 15 minute video out of hours of stuff. So it's going to be easier for some of you to understand this situation. How to seal trunk buffer. Plus from now on, I can just send this video to people who want to see this. So it's going to make my life easier as well. So um, I will have a few um, installs that I'm going to show with pictures. You might remember this was done in the M5 competition. The BMW M5 and what I always focus on is to make the mounting as rigid as possible that's main thing number one number one priority to mount it solidly so as you can see it had an aluminium frame and then this way we only we only needed just a single layer of 18 mil plywood uh, bolted to the frame because in this car it was very important to make it super light. I think the whole structure that you see here was around 5.8 kilos which is around 10 pounds which is ridiculous but it was rigid and it, it sealed the trunk perfectly. So what you can see here if I can go to the next picture on the top there were two mounting points for um, the seat belt mechanism. So actually we took one of them out and replaced it with a proper machine bolt that uh, gives mounting for the top aluminum frame on each side and there was one point in the middle. So we had three points on the top and at the bottom, these were the original tie points that we got rid of and then same way we used that to mount the aluminum frame. And then so we only needed this one single 18 mil plywood buffer that was uh, cut to the exact shape of the uh, interior panel. And then to the time it was trimmed, we had to hammer it in place, into place. Because the tension between carpet and carpet is, is so tight that it, it seals, seals the space perfectly. Yes, there is a little bit of a gap at the bottom, but to the time we had everything in place. Wow, this is from the cabin side. But to the time we had the trim panel going behind it, which was also um, molded to the exact, sh exact shape as you see, plus the Amprec on the top, then this way the leakage from the back of the trunk to the front is minimal. The parcel shelf uh, was really well um, soundproofed by factory. So actually in this car, we didn't even do anything to the top at all, nothing. In most cars, I would apply a single layer of um, two, three mil deadening and cover the whole shelf. And that would be just fine. In this car, we didn't do anything and the outcome was still awesome. Um, then on to the next one. This was done in a Honda Accord 2007 in a Accord saloon. This was built actually to my father-in-law. Same way mounting at the bottom, you can see, but here the original tie points were, were way further away. So I had to build this platform first. And on top it was a bit, bit tricky because um, the rear seats can only be tipped with these yellow pulleys which is stupid you can't even open it from the cabin absolutely stupid um, so then I 
beer to buffalo going across and oh that's a beautiful picture of me sitting in the trunk it was quite funny at that time um so i just had to make sure that the buffalo was in right angle to the main platform that's why you can see i'm pulling a line over there um so when i took it all out i could bond this buffalo to the base mounting and then on the top there was a two two and a half inch wooden strip going across that got bolted to the top frame at those two points so then after I took the the structure out I bonded the the buffer to that smaller strip so this way I I could easily um, get to the bolts get to those pulleys and everything there is a bit of a leakage there going to the cabin but it is what it is. Then on the sides, oh yes, go back. On the sides, as you can see, I taped it up to make a template for the small wooden pieces I created. Uh, this is from the cabin, so you can see the tape as it's lit. And then once I cut it out from wood, I bond it to the buffle. And then uh, I made sure that it's strengthened so I added another layer of 18 mil to the sides all glued to it as you can see then from the trunk I needed I added another piece overlapping the factory trim panel and also these pieces give you the platform for mounting the trim panel and spacing it away from the buffer and the driver the driver sits onto the buffer from the trunk so the driver faces the trunk not like in the bmw earlier where the driver was facing the cabin um, but realistically it doesn't matter which way it's facing um, it's really about how you can create a mounting for the driver and how you have enough depth for the magnet which way you can have the sub facing and get more space in the trunk Okay, oh yeah, so after completion, oh I mustn't use the, the mouse, it's just jumping too much. This was what it looked like from the cabin. I added a small piece to the bottom, as you can see, a small piece of wood that was nailed to this structure at the bottom to seal it down there. And then again, from the trunk to the time, everything, all the trim panels and everything, um, was in place then that made sure that at the bottom and the sides we had the perfect seal and this was that trunk build with that stuff in the trunk that he doesn't use enough times and I always tell him off it's quite quite stupid when I'm with him he, he wants to crank it he wants to enjoy it but when he's on his own sometimes he doesn't even turn it on and I'm like you know how is it that you you enjoy full tilt going crazy listening to his rock music and then when he's on his own he might just turn the radio on. Weird. Dad. Getting older I guess. Um, so E63 AMG. Same way on the top you can see uh, rib nuts fitted in the top. Crossbar and then at the bottom there's a pair down here. And then over there, I was using the original mounting points. When you create rib nuts in the floor, just make sure that you have nothing underneath that you drill into. Fortunately, the tank, the, the tank, I can't even talk, the tank is um, underneath the rear seats in most cars, but just make sure that there's nothing underneath there when you drill. In this car I built quite a structure and then people thought that this is like a box type thing. Realistically you wouldn't really require these sidewalls at all but I needed that in place to give extra strength for the buttfall because it's a dual 15 plus I knew that I would have to uh, mount the trim panel from the cabin side to something so at least here I could use this edge to mount to 
um, as well as in the middle you can see that really chunky triple layer um, brace and we also had a step in the floor that was tricky so that's why I had to build it up from many uh, layers um, there was a step up here so this platform is a good two inches higher than the actual bottom in the trunk but over here as well you can see the original mounting points there and there where it's bolted down and you will see the other one later and then this was a trim panel that I built and I molded to the exact um, cutout this didn't require much uh, filling up with fiber filler because I managed to cut it really nice and neatly that's the only place where you can see the cable running into the trunk but to the time the trunk side is also sealed there's not much leakage that you can talk about or that would affect the performance and from the trunk side the same way I made this um, template solution with tape so in the buffle I fitted uh, threaded inserts which then were pulling this piece against it over here it doesn't look like it's it's perfectly lining up but because it's dual layer 18 mil um, at the back side of it where it's against the carpet it's sealing it perfectly but if you wanted to go really crazy you could fill it up tape it out protect it fill it up with fiber filler filler whatever you want um, but then I had the trim panel another trim panel in front of this piece so plenty of layers to seal the trunk oh actually yeah, on the top you can see the deadening sealing the shelf and this was the end result of this trunk build where underneath these per perspex pieces I had the mounting points board points pulling this nice trim panel against these sides and this way it gave a really nice and clean look without seeing any bolts and this was once it was carpeted that trim panel at the front sealing it oh this car was rocking unfortunately we had to strip it out didn't last long but actually we are going to fit this kit in a new car very soon yep and that drop up was actually great because we could put in just a single strip of LED and then washing up it gave enough to create a bit of a, a factor a wow factor and then that's where you can see the board point going up into the uh, crossbar running on the top another trunk the Subaru Impreza um, that was a tricky one because this car had these um, steel bars running across for um, well, what would you call these tensioners for the tailgate we could get rid of uh, one of them because actually we had to get rid of one of them as the target was replaced the factory was replaced with a full carbon piece which was so light that two of these tensioners would just fly the target up all the way um, and then finally later on we had to get rid of the other one as well because when you only push one arm it twists it twists the the whole target and because carbon can flex a bit we had issue from that so we had to cut it out later so we got rid of both of them if I had known that right at the beginning my life would have been a million times easier uh, but at the beginning because I was planning to keep that I was told to keep that it made my life super extremely difficult because you you can see I had to build up million little layers and steps to work it around all the little things which were up there um, yeah this was tricky to build but at the bottom you can also see this piece this was sitting against the floor carpet ceiling at the bottom bolted onto this structure and then on the sides I didn't go outwards like in the previous one um, I put these pieces um, slotted them in against the carpet and it was shaped into the carpet like that once it was trimmed 
same way it sealed it really well. So you can see these pieces going forward, pushed in against the carpet that did the, the ceiling. Um, yeah, two 18s in a trunk like this. I don't even know how we did it. Literally, there was no tolerance for the subs on the top and the bottom. We had a few millimeters. They just managed to go in, but they couldn't go with the magnets towards the cabin because that was just not enough room. Not the magnet. Actually, the magnet could have come, but because the basket has that round over shape, it just couldn't fit that way. Plus, this car didn't have to be practical and had to look something quite special. And we just did that. One of my favorite designs, which just gave so much to the owner. Um, it it has so many um, kind of elements in it that people wouldn't even um, see in it, like this wing, which was representing his past, as he used to be in the Air Force. Plus that motive or whatever you would call it that's the um molecular molecular i can't even talk again um sign of carbon because the whole car is well if, if so many parts were replaced to full carbons like this tag it as you see it's one single piece the only piece in whole uk well i don't think there are many worldwide so this turned out to be really, really nice. Other than, yeah, it was it was doing silly things as well. These subs could have got way more power. Originally, we were planning to use one of the customer's amplifiers, which was a Wipe amp. He was supplying the amps and it had issues, so we had to replace it. And to stay within budget, we only fitted a Zepco ST1350, which is actually decent power. It was definitely in, enough power to overpower everything else in the in the car um, but we didn't have quite enough battery power and alternator power to go very silly these subs could have taken an ST2000 but then we would have a problem with the electrical side of the setup so the 1350 was was still giving enough for these two subs to to move air and do slight hair trick up front um, but yeah, you could you could put a ST2000 on, on, on these 18 inch FIs easily. Okay, so this is a slightly different way of doing trunk IB. Um, actually, this buffer was um, built to someone and I shipped it to him as this was done a year ago when lockdown started, I think, with uh, an Acoustic Elegance 12 inch SPB. 12 with Apollo upgrade, which is not necessary for sub duties, but it was like that. So I had this sub from Lee and I had different plans with this sub, but plans changed. Um, it's just dual layer and I created a nice round over for it because this buffer was bolted against the rear seat in a BMW E39. I'm not, not exactly sure which, which BMW it is. Early 2000s, 5 Series. Um, and this buffle is not the very same buffle that you saw here. This car was actually built by Lee and it's a very similar sub, just with different cosmetics. Um, so I sent that buffle to the owner and he said he would make it work. He would, he would seal it to the side nicely and the sub was lined up with the central armrest where the sub can breathe through. Um, this is not my ideal way of doing trunk IB. If the car has cross braces running down like that behind the rear seats, then you can easily bolt the buffle to those cross steel braces, then, then it's okay. But when people bolt the buffle to the actual seat, um, it can work, but it really depends on the structural strength of the seat plus how you can um, mount to it. But because the seat on the top has hinges and it's not a really fixed mounting, 
it can rattle. So in my eyes, it's not the best way to do it. I would always mount it to, to the car like in the previous uh, options. And that's it. And that's actually it that I wanted to show to you guys. So as you see, you don't have to go absolutely crazy about sealing. Um, just do the seal on the shelf and, and around the, the side edges and you should be fine. I think those people have to worry about it if you want to go for the absolute craziness and SPL. Because after a while, the higher SPL pressure you have in the trunk, um, the better chance you have for leaking into the cabin. But it also depends on the ratio. And I think this is a very important part people have to understand. It's about the ratio of the cone and the leakage. So the leakage has certain surface area of, you know, few square inches. Then you compare that to the surface area of the cones. When you have two 18s or two 15s, if you have a little leakage somewhere here, how much is that going to affect the, the air that's moved by these two cones? Not really. So it's always about that proportion between cone area and the leakage. Yes, you could go absolutely crazy. Um, let's say fill up the trunk with, with um, smoke or something and then push the subs, which would push the smoke into the cabin. Um, but, you know, I, I think on, on normal listening levels or even if you go loud, it doesn't affect much only if you really want to go SPL. But, but if you do SPL, you wouldn't use IB. IB is not supposed to be for that. I know some people did um, pretty amazing scores with, with IB solution, but only at the low lows. If, if you want to be loud above 30 hertz, 40, 40 hertz for daily booming, IB is not your thing. But if you want beautiful extension and linear uh, extension all the way down, then then this is it. This is what you require for a great sound quality build. So this is pretty much it guys for this video. Hopefully you liked it. It's definitely shorter than, than watching all my playlists uh, with these installs. But go to the description and I'm going to put the links there for these builds. Then you can see the long versions when I explain everything. Um, and feel free to share it. Comment the usual way. Feel free to, you know, share share it everywhere, everywhere, and tell it to everyone that IB is is awesome. I definitely like it, and I will always use it when I can. Subscribe to the channel, guys, because I can still see that many of you are not subscribed. It's very important because otherwise you will miss the next videos. Always set up your ringtone and and notifications so you see when when I upload a video. And um, this way you won't, you know, you won't miss the next one. Um, so that's it. I'll finish it here, guys. Hopefully you liked it. And see you in the next one. Take care.